Hello, good evening, students. So let's begin with our class. Today we'll be dealing with chapter six. We have finished with chapter one, that is introduction to leadership and the types and the models of leadership. Then we did in session two, we spoke about professional turfs in social service and human service organizations. Then in class three, we spoke about chapter three and we spoke about self-leadership and distributed leadership in social service sector. Then we moved on to chapter four in the fourth session and we learned about social work management and the role of social work manager. Then the last class, we learned about leadership and direct social work practice. And today we are going to learn about board of directors in social service organization. Just like the corporate world or any other organization, even the social service organizations or in the social service sector, we have different organization, be it a philanthropic organization or a charitable organization. They have, you know, um, you know, authority at different rungs or different levels. I remember I gave you an assignment on the organizational structure of social service organizations. So there you must have, uh, you know, read about directors in social service organization. Directors at, in social service organization, they are part of board of directors. So the board of directors is at the highest level and um, the highest level. And then we have, of course, uh, you have the executive body there, and then you have the, uh, you know, the other department and the other departmental heads, and then we have the other staff members. But today we are going to confine our study to the board of directors and their role. Today's class also is going to be, um, you know, a class, uh, I mean, on the subject, which is quite simple and the contents also quite simple. I just need your patient listening. And if you have any questions, you can ask at uh, the end of the class. So let's, let me just share the slide. So every organization differs in its structure. We know that. And as per, of course, the difference is, uh, it depends upon the type of the organization it is, whether it's a corporate organization or a social service organization again, and what type of social service organization it is, whether it's a human service organization or it's a philanthropic organization, or it is a charitable organization. And again, what is the purpose of the organization? What is the mission of the organization? What is the vision of the organization? Now, a social service organization or even a human service organization is headed by the board of directors, which may have an executive committee followed by the departmental heads and the other staff members. So in this chapter, we're going to learn about the board of directors and their role in the social service organization. Now, we all know that generally speaking, the board of directors are accountable for the general uh, you know, functioning of the organization. They hold a fiduciary position. They are accountable for reviewing and uh, you know, evaluating the performance of the organization. They actually are uh, you know, entrusted with fiduciary duties to the extent of finances where they are answerable to the world on behalf of the organization. So likewise, even in social service organization, they are accountable for reviewing, evaluating, and making recommendations about the organization's functioning, overall performance, and finances, including incoming donations, because here we are talking about social service organization, and of course, uh, incoming donations in the case of a charitable organization of funds or grants and strategic planning with respect to funds and grants and how the funds are allocated for what purpose they are used in case of social service or human service organization. So 
self-serving actions or where the directors are concerned about themselves or try to enrich themselves that is actually abhorred, that is illegitimate or would be considered as illegal. That is self-serving actions abhorred and are considered as illegitimate or illegal. So the decision-making process is reflected in uh, a social service organization by the board of directors. It is reflected by consensus decision-making or contested decision-making by way of voting. I'll reiterate this. The decision-making process we understand is normally at the highest rung of the organization. That is, it is carried on by the board of directors. Now, how do they decide on things? What is the process that the decision-making process is by consensus? That is, consensus means meeting of minds. Consensus here, consensus means meeting of minds. Okay, so there is consensus decision making where all of them agree to a particular decision or contested to contest. That means to, uh, you know, where you put a, you know, a motion or, you know, put an agenda or a motion for vote and then you decide on, you know, the maximum number of votes and, you know, whatever it is. So if it gains the maximum number of votes, that means that particular thing is accepted or they would, you know, collectively would decide upon the particular accept upon which they have achieved maximum number of votes. So therefore, the decision making process in the social service organization by the board of directors is reflected by consensus decision making, that is where all of them agree to a particular decision to be taken or contested decision making where they put the matter of concern to vote or they subject it to voting. Now what's the role of the board of directors in a social service organization? The function and responsibilities of the board of directors differ from organization to organization of course, that we understood that earlier. And the type of organization, of course, differ, differs depending upon the type of the organization, the board composition, that is how many members are there on board, and the powers that are thrust upon the board or the powers that are given to the board of directors under the organization's charter. The board may also comprise of some experts. So the board of directors out of them, some of them may be experts or professional experts who may be appointed to the board to offer their professional expertise to the organization. There may also be certain activists who are passionate about bringing social change, speaking about a social service organization. Now the role of the board may be bifurcated, that is you divide it into two, into the legal role that they play and the management duties that they perform. Some positions may be renewable, whereas some may be contractual. That is directorship position. It might be renewable, that is when the term expires, or it may be contractual, and sometimes it is for a fixed term. Directorship may be for a fixed term, depending upon what type of director it is or what type of role he is. He or she is asked to pay play in the organization, sorry, he has asked to play in the organization. Now the legal duties of the directors on board are the duty of loyalty and duty of care. Now what is duty of loyalty? Duty of loyalty would mean to remain faithful, to you know, deal with matters in the organization fairly, avoid conflict of interest, maintain confidentiality, that is maintain secrecy and not divulge any organizational secrets to third parties or outsiders. That means they're expected to maintain, maintain the highest amount of secrecy and not to release any secret information of the organization to third parties or outsiders. Therefore, it said that they are expected to maintain confidentiality and they are not to divulge or release any organizational secrets to third party or outsiders. In exercising the duty of care, a director is expected to perform his duties in good faith, in the best interest of the organization, and with prudence. 
a director participates in an extraordinary decision making process he attends meetings he delegates duties to the management and he renders wise counsel in case of relevant professional background to answer any relevant question at the fore that means he exercises the utmost duty of care he is expected to perform his duties in good faith that is in the best interest of the organization and with absolute prudence with wisdom he has to weigh the pros and cons and then make the next move in the best interest of the organization while decision making now he participates in an extraordinary decision making process unlike the other uh, you know departments where the departmental heads they are expected to make decisions so you know a director takes uh, you know or is granted extraordinary decision making um you know powers he's empowered with extraordinary decision making uh abilities or he is empowered with you know decision making uh capacity he is empowered to take uh, extraordinary decisions with when it comes to how the finances for example of the organization can be disbursed or to what kind of projects social projects can be taken by the organization because he or the board of directors as a whole they will have to check about whether it meets or it is in compliance with the mission of the organization so thereby a director participates in an extraordinary decision making process he attends meetings he delegates duties accordingly to the management and renders wise counsel in case of relevant professional background to answer any relevant question that may be at the fore or that comes to the fore now the directors also render strategic advice the board of directors also render strategic advice and devise strategic policies for the organization they engage in planning and execution and for this purpose use a contingency or a situational model of of board functioning sometimes planning and execution is also dependent upon any contingencies that they may apprehend or depending upon the situation so therefore we have used the term contingency or situational model of board functioning so they engage in planning and execution and for this purpose they use at times a contingency or situational model of board functioning depending upon what is being planned to be executed next is the fiduciary role what is this fiduciary role fiduciary role is where he actually is holding a high position of trust where he monitors the financial resources of the organization and ensures that there are enough funds for the disbursal of social projects undertaken by the organization he holds a fiduciary position to the extent that he's responsible to the funds of the organization he is expected to represent the interest of the organization but within the law so of course a director you know or directors as a whole the board of directors they fulfill a variety of duties of which we are already uh, studying here we are speaking about planning you know strategic planning and how he executes those plans how he appoints certain management members how he participates in meetings and how he has a fiduciary role where he uh, you know he's like uh you know a custodian of the financial resources of the organization and he's expected to represent the interest of the organization but within the law so in the social service sector he usually coordinates and supports even the fundraising activities and even grant applications the types of directors there may be different types of directors of course there is one inside director and outside director who is an inside director inside director as a name itself suggests is a director who has direct nexus or connection with the management and functioning of the organization in addition to be to being on board as a director an outside director on the contrary is a director who is not an intricate part of the organization he is not really uh, you know a part of the organization but he may be invited to the panel or the board as an expert to participate periodically in the affairs of the organization so this is about inside director and outside director then we have the executive director and the non executive director now who is an executive director an executive director is a director 
who may be an inside director who participates in the execution of various duties and policies within the organization. And now, on the other hand, a non-executive director is simply the one who is not an executive director. Next, we have the de facto director. Now, a director who is not formally appointed but is considered a director and is a member of the board is considered as a de facto director. That is, as factually, he is a director, but he may not be formally appointed to that position, but he is considered to be a director. Next, we have a shadow director or a de jure director. That is, he's the one who performs some functions of a director, but is not named as a director or does not purport or act as a director. That means as per law, he is a director. He is in the shadows, therefore he's called a shadow director. He may be, uh, he is a director. He performs certain functions of a director, but he may not be really named as a director in the, you know, in the list of directors, or he does not purport or act as a director, but in fact, or, you know, in law, for the purpose of law, he is a director. That's why he's called as a de jure director or a shadow director. Then we have a nominee director. Now, who is a nominee director? A nominee director is a director who may or may not be appointed contractually or by a resolution passed at the relevant meeting, but who continues to perform the task for which he or she is appointed. And that is normally for a fixed period. Then we have the ex-official board members who are the ex-official board members. These are members due to a position. They're called as ex-official members because of the position that they hold. That means a member by virtue of position or position they hold within the organization and they're designated as such, that is as the ex-official members. So these ex-official board members possess all the same rights as the other board members. Now, next, we have the advisory board member. These advisory board members may be a part of a particular committee that is advisory uh, uh, board committee or, a, you know, it could be just a committee so or advisory committees. They may be a part of advisory committee. So these are advisory board members. The advisory board may comprise of external advisors internal members and an independent chairperson. So this is what they have within the committee. It, it may comprise of external advisors who may be professionals in their field. They may have internal members who are already part of the social service organization. And there is an independent chairperson. An advisory board member may be a part of a distinct advisory board within the organization, or he may be a part of the board of directors. Now here, professional external advisors are appointed by the organization for their knowledge, experience, and expertise. Like for example, sometimes, you know, legal professionals are taken on board, uh, you know, to just to render legal advice, uh, depending upon, you know, the functioning of, depending upon what is required within the organization or for, to enable smooth, uh, you know, functioning of their organization with respect to compliance and so on. So they've not really performed the fiduciary role. That is, it's not that they represent the entire interests of the organization. They do not hold a duty of trust. However, they are external advisors. They may be professionals. They may be also volunteers who may be invited to join an organization to aid in achieving the goals of the organization for a specific or limited time. And the individual is expected to use his or her professional resources to benefit the organization. Next, we have the executive committee. Now, executive committee is normally a part of the board. This executive committee possesses the power to act on behalf of the full board. And this is a committee that is a part of the board and is responsible for navigating and governing important aspects comprising of a president, that it has a president of the executive committee, then they have a vice president, they may have a committee secretary, then a treasurer, and any other position that they may choose to be made part of the committee, and along with them, they may have other committee members. Now, apart from that, they may be supporting subcommittees under the executive committee, such as the governance committee, finance committee, audit committee, 
like for, to carry on or conduct internal audits, etc., depending upon the need, the purpose, the mission, and the charter of the organization, each functioning as per the bylaws of the organization. So therefore, we can conclude that directors are an important, uh, you know, part of the organization, they are central to any social service organization, they are at the highest level of decision making, they're expected to represent the interest of the organization, but within the law, then directors fulfill a variety of duties, um, you know, they or ex they, in fact, they anticipate the consequence of their actions, both collectively and individually. And, you know, after anticipating the consequences of the action, they're expected to strategize and come up with certain, uh, you know, decision and then plan to execute that particular decision. They're expected to exercise their skill to the level of their competence, especially when it comes to, you know, an advisory board director, when he's part of a committee, he has, he is actually expected, rather he is, you know, he has to exercise his or her skill to the level of the, com the competence for the purpose of which they are actually appointed. Like for example, there is a legal professional who joins the organization as part of an, you know, and the advisory board, they call it advisory board members. So what is the role of a legal person to do his or her best in rendering the best legal advice to advance the purpose of the social service organization and to see that it is within the mandate of law, whether there is compliance, and uh, whether whatever decisions are made are within the law to help them prepare drafts, to help them prepare agreements, to help them to, you know, with proper policy framing and so on. So what a board member who is from the legal field is expected to do, for example, he's expected or she is expected normally to exercise his or her skill to the level of the competence of to the level of his or her professional competence. So therefore, a director overall, considering the role of the director, he has to be or she has to be well acquainted to the governance of the entire structure and also to be acquainted to the governance documents of the organization. Normally, he is expected to identify risk as a board of directors, they're expected to identify risks and strategize to mitigate those risks and then further on, you know, advance the purpose of the organization, which has to be, again, with strategy, has to be framed in compliance with or aligned with the mission and the vision of the organization or the charter of the organization. Therefore, propose the board of directors and the role in a social service organization. The board of director is accountable for reviewing, evaluating, and making recommendations about, about the organization's functioning, overall performance and finances, including incoming donations in the case of charitable organization of funds, grants, strategic planning, and allocation in the case of any social service or human service organization. And again, self-serving actions are heard or highly discouraged and are considered as illegitimate. So today's class, we will be dealing, we have dealt with, sorry, we have dealt with only the role of the board of directors and uh, the, that is who, I mean, what does, uh, you know, uh, the highest level of the social service organization comprise of, so the, at the highest level, we have the board of directors. And after that, we may have the other departments, which are headed by the other departmental heads. And of course, then we have the other staff members who aid in the smooth functioning of the organization. So thereby we have studied today the board of directors. We have just touched upon the role of the board of directors that he is accountable for reviewing, evaluating, making recommendations, strategizing, and how he, you know, who are there, they may comprise of even certain experts and the major role that, uh, uh, you know, the a director plays there, that is the major legal duty is a duty of loyalty and a duty of care. And he also plays the fiduciary role where he represents the interest of the organization, you know, but within the law, how he monitors the financial resources of the organization, he renders strategic advice, he engages in strategic planning and execution, and also uses, uh, you know, contingency or situational model of board functioning, depending upon 
what is the matter to be attended to. Next is the different types of directors. There are different types of directors like inside director, the outside director, a nominee director, a de facto director, a shadow or a de jure director, executive director or a non-executive director. Then we have the ex-official board members. Then we have the advisory board members. And apart from that, then we have the executive committee who are a part of the board of directors. Of course, they are part of the board of directors, but they are, you know, they are like um, really a functioning executive committee where they possess the power to act on behalf of the full board. And they may be divided into subcommittees such as governance committee, finance committee, and audit committee. So this is all for board of directors of social service organization. Again, the role depends and differs from organization to organization, depending upon what type of social service organization it is, whether it is a um, philanthropic organization, or it is a charitable organization, or it is human service organization, and so on. So that's about for this class. Now, before we wind up, again, a gentle reminder on your assignment. I've received a lot of uh, questions asking me about, you know, uploading it in the Google Classroom. I'd encourage you to upload it in the Google Classroom and not just send it to me by email. The purpose of uploading it in Google Classroom, what is the purpose? The purpose is obviously that no, it has, it, you know, it is like a record for all of us. You know, it is a record for you that you have, uh, you know, submitted it. It is a record for me that the student has submitted and it is also, you know, a record for Accord University. And then you are assessed and your marks are displayed as against your name and your assignment that is uploaded in the Google Classroom. Be on time, at least for the second assignment. I have extended the date to September because one of you, um, you know, represented the class and requested me to, you know, postpone the date. So I postponed it to September. Now, after this, we have just two more classes remaining. They are short chapters as well. Chapter seven and chapter eight. Chapter eight is the smallest of all. So we are almost completing with the syllabus. Get ready for your exams. Important questions. I will discuss it during the last class. And uh, of course, the question paper pattern would be where you would be asked, pay attention, you would be asked, um, you know, uh, the, of course, the total would be 25. And then you would be asked, um, you know, long answers. And uh, out of three, you will have to answer one. And then you will have a short note again of out of two, you will have to answer one. I will share what are the important questions, what are the important topics, uh, most probably during the last class. I will just discuss about that. So for now, get ready with your assignments and really endeavor to submit it on time. I've taken your attendance. Abdulaziz Nasser Abdirahman, Abdirahman Yusuf Abdullahi Muhammad Ali Molim Aden, then Ahmed Aided. Fatma Kin, uh, who's Galaxy, please put your name in the chat box. Then uh, Houdin Ibrahim Ali, again, who's iPhone. Then there is Jamal Mohammed, Mohammed, Mohammed Yusuf, Muki Munali, Nasr Ali, Zainab, and Mohammed Yusuf Barre. Please put your name in the chat box. iPhone, who is iPhone? Okay, one minute. I'll just take and okay. I'll just take a snapshot of this as well. Okay, so it's Ali Abu Baker and Palestine. Okay, thank you so much. I will update your attendance in my attendance sheet, and uh, that's all for today's class. Meet you next Thursday. Uh, this subject is quite easy and um, you've already done this in your, you know, for your assignment about the organization structure and I, I believe you've already touched upon the board of directors. The notes will be uploaded as usual in the Google Classroom. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If not, we can, you know, disperse and meet the next class. Uh, sorry, teacher, thank you for beautiful explanation.
Uh, then I ask you a question about uh, an assignment. Me yeah. and other oh. students is new for class. We mm -hmm. missing uh, a lot of work assignment like uh, sheet. What is the solution about that? Okay, when did you join the class? Uh, uh, one week ago. One week ago. Okay, mm. one week ago. That means is this your second class or is it your first class? Check one, one uh, first class. Uh oh. So this is your first class. So if this is your first class, I would like to tell you that we have, uh, uh, you know, again, you see in the chat, I'm going to again put the chapters that we have already, uh, you know, completed. Again, I'm going to put here for everyone to see as a direct message. Okay, for everyone in the meeting. So if you see there, I put it in the chat. These are the chapters that we have already completed. Chapter one was introduction, chapter two, professional turfs, chapter three, self-leadership and distributed leadership, chapter four is social work management, and chapter five, leadership and direct social work practice, and chapter six, that is today we have dealt with the board of directors. Now, for those who are new, I would like to, uh, you know, again, reiterate saying that your, uh, I would want you to really download the course description, okay? Go to your Google Classroom and uh, check for this, this particular subject. You have your course description, which is already, you know, uploaded there, download it. Next is you have, I've already uploaded for each session, for each lecture that is, uh, it taken each lecture is recorded the video recordings are there and this uh, powerpoint presentation also is uploaded in your google classroom in addition to that i have provided you notes okay so so far five chapters have been uploaded in your google classroom so today i will be uploading chapter six that is board of directors in social service organization okay so that's about it now regarding the assignment uh try your best to you know give it along with uh your second assignment is that okay 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 this okay so your second assignment um assignment two uh, the last only, day, only the, try hmm? only try assignment two okay so uh, assignment two the due date is september one okay so first september so okay. try to submit it you know by the first of september both the assignments the first assignment is on um it's it's already uploaded there in your Google Classroom. Yeah, any other question? Hello. Okay. I think it's clear. Thank you, teacher. Okay, you're welcome. One minute. Yeah, there are students who have already uploaded it. And the first assignment has been on the organization structure of social services with emphasis on board.